I am here with Mark Potier on the Microsoft Teams team. Can you tell me a little bit about what you do with Microsoft Teams, Mark? Absolutely. I'm the uh, group program manager for messaging, uh, which is just a phenomenal space. Perfect. Um, you just came out of a great session on everything that's new in Microsoft Teams right now. A uh, lot is new. The laundry list is quite extensive, which yeah. is exciting. So we're going to touch on just a few things. Uh, the first thing I'd like to ask you about is, can you tell us a bit about the new image annotations and what, what that entails? Yeah, so there's a great new feature on mobile, which allows you to snap a picture and uh, you can just quickly annotate it before you send it off. And that's a really critical scenario for, let's say, the healthcare area. So one of the big announcements this, this week was that uh, we're moving, you know, we're looking at how do we take Teams as a platform and adopt it to different verticals like healthcare or uh, frontline workers. And there's just a lot of situations where somebody needs to take a picture and draw attention to a very specific area of it. So that's, that's what we have. Um, I'd also say that though that the camera is on the mobile side is also really tailored for mobile first experiences. So being able to automatically crop things and and give you the image that you need in, in a single click. That's a really cool new feature. It's neat to see it in work and then see it on the desktop as well. Um, there are some enhancements to the inline code snippets that was released earlier, but what are the enhancements that come to that experience? Yeah, so code snippets, when we first released Microsoft Teams, we had like a little code block or something like that, and it would just basically put it into monospace, right? And it wasn't it wasn't a great, great experience. So we uh, developed code snippets, which allows you to take a, a real block of code, paste it in, and it'll go ahead and format it, you know, just as you would see it in something like, you know, Visual Studio or, or yeah. a developing environment in IDE. And uh, it'll add in all the line numbers, everything else, so you can reference it particular pieces and uh, also you can select the language and it'll go ahead and highlight all the right elements so it's a great environment just for developers right to be able to share the code and, and communicate yeah that that has to make developers happy that uh that and some of the api announcements that are in preview and all that is a good time for developers on yeah. teams uh one other thing that i want to touch on is the um there was a a visual uh, you had uh, some bunch of text on the screen, yeah. and then you could click on words and have it read off. Yeah, yeah. And then there was an enhancement that you showed where there was actually a, an image there. Can you tell me what that is and how that's used? Yeah, so this is uh, this is the immersive reader. And uh, this is one of the coolest features, I think, that, that we've shipped this, I, I wouldn't say this year, but I mean, we shipped a lot this year. So. But it, it was really designed, uh, initially it was for education. And it was for um, people who had, you know, effectively uh, visual disabilities and, and couldn't really read long form content. So what it does is the immersive viewer pretty much um, fills up the message like edge to edge that it consumes the entire screen, yeah. blows up the text so it's really, really visible. And then you can actually play um, the, the message. And so you can hear it being read back to you. So cool. The cool thing about it too is that it's really applicable for EDU. Um, so they wanted something where they could do something for kids that have AD and D. So, or ADD. So you could go ahead and um, really restrict the amount of text that they see and so they can read along with it. And there's a visual dictionary built in. So if you're just learning English for the first time, you can hear the words as they're spoken and you can click on them and see a picture of what that word means, which is a great experience, right, for kids who are just learning. That, that was, and the audience loved that piece. That, that was something they all thought was really cool. I think it's amazing, yeah. It, absolutely, it was really cool. Uh, another feature that has been, uh, I know, widely requested uh, has been the ability to share your desktop, well, in messaging only. Tell us a little bit about what, what's new there. Yeah, so it used to be that you have to start a call with somebody and maybe they'd pick up, maybe they wouldn't. Um, and uh, then you'd have to have a conversation with them and eventually you get around to sharing your desktop. Well, what we've done is for any kind of chat that you're involved in, like a one-on-one -on -one chat, you can go ahead and just click on a single button, select whether you want to share your desktop or your window, and they'll get a notification at the other end indicating that you want to share your desktop and they can accept it and you're, you're done. It's that easy. And the virtual crowds on user voice cheered loudly for that, I'm yeah, sure. Yeah, a PM on my, a PM on my uh, team put that together, Rhea, did, she, she did a phenomenal job. Excellent. Let's shift uh, focus to a couple areas that are kind of favorites for me with a Skype and, and now Teams background, uh, meetings and calling. What are a couple of the new features coming or that just landed for 
meetings that you would say are, are your, your favorites that you just discussed? Yeah, I think the biggest one is really live events. Um, and that's that's the ability to be able to host a broadcast event to around 10,000 people all at once. Big crowd. A big crowd, right? And one of the cool things about it is um, that you can actually assign different roles to individuals that are participating in the in the event. So uh, you can have several different presenters there. You can have uh, a producer uh, that's responsible for sort of composing the event live as it goes. So like in your case, if you had multiple people here, you'd be able to switch between views of, of who's talking at what moment um, and really tailor the experience to your audience. So it's great for webinars and it's, it's really one of the things that rounds out the entire meetings experience and just makes it 100% ready for enterprise. And I know with live events, you can get a little more complex and actually have third party equipment that switches to like a different screen as well. So very cool. Uh, background Blur is is now GA. Has been a fan favorite of many. I've seen so many screenshots across Twitter and LinkedIn about this. Yeah. Uh, the, the, the BBC piece, was that your idea? <laughs> that wasn't my idea. That's actually, you know, I kind of poke fun at marketing, but I love them. They're, they're, they do such an amazing job, but they uh, secured the rights to that. And, and we've, you know, it happened right around the time where we first announced it back in EC. And, and uh, they were, you know, it just resonated so well with the crowd. Like this is, this is an experience that I really need to avoid these kind of situations. And yeah, it's I, really fun. it was. I mean, it's a very popular image. It was. It was a, a very funny and clever way for marketing to, to build that in. Yeah. Uh, it was also pretty fun watching Brad Anderson do some blur, <laughs> background background blur at the airport. So, um, okay, calling. There's a couple new features in the calling uh, realm as well. Can you talk about what some of those are? Yeah, there's a whole bunch of them actually. So um, obviously we have uh, so things like privacy mode where so if you go into D&D, &D, you can define uh, priority access. Uh, so for if I'm in, in a mode where I'm presenting a whole bunch of content um, and I don't want calls, then D&D &D automatically kicks in. Well, if I want to receive a call from somebody, let's say my wife or my boss or both of them at the same time, I don't know, but uh, then I can go ahead and add them to that list and they can just break right through. I think another one that is really critical is um, being able to have call groups. And so this is a really cool thing for like a small office where you have three or four people that work together as a team um, and uh, maybe they're covering for each other all the time. So in this particular scenario, maybe I leave and I get up and I go to lunch and somebody calls for me. Um, if, if my call just rings to my phone, it'll probably be missed. And if it was a sale or something, I might miss out on that. What I can do is I can configure teams to ring out to all the people that I work with, um, either all at the same time, or I can do it in sequence. So, uh, the, you know, maybe the next best salesperson then picks up and then so on until, until the call's handled. Yeah, and that was one of those advanced voice features that I think people have been asking for as they watch the transition of, of voice from Skype for Business Online over to Teams. And and, and it's it's just the tip of the iceberg, right? Like that's that's a very, in a lot of ways, it's a very simple feature when you look at IVRs and call queues and what we're doing going to be doing for call, um, call yeah. park. It gets so much deeper and so much more sophisticated. It really does, but it was widely requested nonetheless, so it's yeah. great to see it. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, okay, the, I mean, we, we really scratched the surface, I feel, on new features. There were so many, so I'm gonna encourage everyone to go and watch the on-demand playback of this session. It was the What's New in Team sessions. Um, and then the, you can you can see everything that was new there and demoed, great session. Last thing I wanna ask you about since we went over all those features is metrics. Uh, Teams has been awesome, people have loved it. There have been uh, concerns around like device uh, RAM utilization, things like that. Yep. Can you tell us about some of the metrics improvements you talked about in the session? Yeah, so we've been laser focused on improving performance. Um, it's been a huge priority across the entire team and uh, we've been really diligent about sort of profiling everything that's going on and looking for ways of reducing memory footprint but also increasing core performance. So we were really happy to be able to announce that we've achieved at least 33% improvement in core performance metrics. So things like switching between channels, switching between uh, chats, um, even app load time. All of these things are improving at a really, really fast rate. And uh, we're just looking forward to bringing more of that as we go. We know that performance is so critical to our users. So yeah, Absolutely, and you guys have done a great job. You've been listening to feedback really well all year. So congratulations on those stats. Yeah, thank you. That's all I've got for you today. I really appreciate you taking some time out of your busy schedule to chat. Of course. And uh, we'll, uh, we'll hopefully see you here next year. Awesome, thank you so much. Thank you.